Once we go back and we find the memories, we find the wounding experiences, we can invite Jesus into them. All right, so let's take a turn here, you know, talking about what fantasies are. Let's get into more practical stuff here. So what does it look like to overcome these fantasies? We've identified what fantasies are, what they reveal to us. Now, how do we put some stuff into play that allows us to heal from these? Yes. So the solution is not avoid your fantasies. Stop it. Yeah, right, seriously. <laughs> or suppress them or control them. Ultimately, I feel like we can even do that in a spiritual way. Like, okay, you're, you're hit with a sexual fantasy, run away, you know, flee sexual immorality, right. which, which is valid. That's a valid Bible verse. Or um, I'm going to uh, remind myself of the truth as hard as I can. Right. Um, you know, slap a Bible verse on that thing and, and see if you can overpower it. Ultimately, those kinds of strategies keep our brain in fight or flight mode in the limbic system, which is ultimately a fear response. Mm -hmm. So what does it look like to overcome these fantasies? Rather than taking a fear-based response of running away from the fantasies or trying to overpower them, a love response. And you can only do that when you can see through the story to the little child on the other side. Mm -hmm. And this is part of what I call reparenting myself. Mm -hmm. Once I can face my fantasies and trace them back in time to the memories at the core of them, then I can start a relationship with that little boy on the other side, the 13 year old kid who moved from Canada to Texas, the 11 year old who was at summer camp and relate to him in love. And when I can see through the story to my younger self and and I can be sad about what happened to him. I can be mad that it shouldn't have happened to him. Then I'm no longer dealing with sexual temptation. I'm redeeming, I'm joining God in redeeming my life. And that's a completely different frame of mind. It's, mm -hmm. it's the feeling of curiosity over what happened and compassion for myself that fight or flight can never provide. Yeah. Well, and, and with it in those moments, inviting the Holy Spirit to reveal to us what we were feeling and thinking. Because for some people, Drew, that haven't done, you know, the kind of work you have and have the background in this, this might be a new experience for them. We're like, ah, I don't, you know, I don't know. And so I think in that loving manner to say, Holy Spirit, would you help me to see what, yes. what I was going through? Would you help me to see what yeah. I, what did I really feel and learn from this? And, yeah. and then would you help me to see how you felt about me and what you were saying yeah. in this time and where were you at? And, and understanding that his presence was there even then, whether or not we were aware of it, I think can start to change the experience from one of only a negative yes. to a recognition of his presence with us, you know, yeah. walking through that really hard, difficult, traumatic experience and, and start yeah. to change how we feel about it because we've got that the presence of the spirit walking through it with us. Yeah. Yeah. Once we go back and we find the memories, we find the wounding experiences, we can invite Jesus into them and then he can transform them. Yeah. And I think it's important too, though, to invite other people into that to some degree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think anything of value in life is done in relationship. Um, and, and this doesn't mean that, you know, to use Drew's example, you don't come on, you know, a podcast that's got thousands of listeners every month and share some of your darkest stuff. It's not that it's, uh, it's really inviting people that, you know, and you love and you trust into your process of this. Um, mm -hmm. this is why, you know, pure desire groups were so impactful for me yeah. is cause I could be honest about these things and guys could ask questions and I could invite perspective um, and, and really dialogue with people about it um, because, and, and this is something I'm learning uh, continual, like just ongoing in life, is that the Holy Spirit uh, is just as able to talk through someone else as he is through scripture. He can use someone else's words, someone else's experiences to heal me and to heal my wounds as well. So I think that there's an element of inviting other people into the process mm -hmm. and into the healing as well that's going to be powerful.